Checking here at team number 1325, Inverse Paradox. These are your three-time finalists coming in from Ontario, including finalists on their division as well, too. I'm with uh, Corbin, Clayton, and Hannah, and we're going to find out a bit more about their awesome robot um, behind the bumper. So, Corbin, we're going to start with you talking about some of the intake features of your bot, and let's show off some of these cool things. All right, so this year we opted with a, a, a kind of combination intake between uh, hatch panels and cargo. Right, and so if you want to bring it to uh, the floor, it can pick up from both the floor and the human player station. Right, and so when we run it, it'll automatically go in, automatically flip up and uh, uh, go to hold position away from def defenders. Um, and eject if you want to go to level two or level one. And to eject it, um, we kind of right here. Right. It pulls down, uh, pulling the wheels and kind of forcing it onto the, the rocket, uh, attaching it on both sides of the, the Velcro. Um, and then we also intake balls with this, um, which kind of, and being able to bring it to, to all the levels. <laughs> and, uh, and then storing capabilities. And uh, we, can, we can actually shoot over a defender uh, by raising it above it and we can kind of uh, get some good distance on that. So next, we kind of saw a little bit of it happen, but we're going to talk about the elevator on this robot and some of the kind of cool uh, presets functionalities and what they do with those. Let's check that out. So on this robot, we have a combination of a pivot point arm and an elevator, which allows us to go to all three heights of the rocket. And the arm allows us to angle our claw to different angles so that we can score uh, more efficiently on the cargo ship and so that we can peel the hatch off as seen before. So can we show off some of the functionality that goes through and why don't you talk us through what's happening? Yeah, sure. So we have three different presets. So here's intake, which we've already seen. We have level one, level two, and I'm not going to go up to level three because it'll fair. hit the top. Yeah, and it basically um, on our wrist, we actually sense whether we have a hatch or a ball. Uh, hatches are detected using limit switches that are inside these kind of uh, slots, and we use a light sensor on the cargo for the cargo. And essentially what this allows us to do is only have one set of buttons for level one, level two, level three, so the operator doesn't have to worry about what kind of game piece they have. It'll just go to the preset. So when you're looking in regards to on the field, and you said your operator doesn't really have to worry, how does that allow you to just be more efficient on the field, and what have you seen come out of that? Um, it really helps because they don't have to worry about, they don't have to look at the robot and see what kind of game piece it is, even though they already know. They don't have to memorize another set of buttons, which can be really confusing for some teams. I see some teams with like operator controllers, and it's just kind of um, inconvenient for them to have on the field. And so this just allows it to make it much easier for the operator to just focus on things that they need to focus on. Well, Hannah, thank you very much for uh, showing us off as well. Everybody else here on the team. Inverse Paradox looking really good here at the Detroit Championships. Can't wait to see how they uh, play out here as we run through. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.